welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chiu Ki Chen, and today we are talking with... Matt Logan. So Matt, where are you based, and what do you do? I'm an Android developer for Social Code, which is a San Francisco company, but I recently moved to Denver, so I'm here in Denver now. Welcome to Colorado. Thank you. All right, and how do you get started in Android? Uh, it's kind of a winding road. So I graduated college 2012, was interested in physics, ended up doing a physics research assistantship at Portland State University, uh, mostly programming in Mathematica and like physics simulations that I was running in Lua. Um, and started writing an iPhone app just because I had a lot of free time. Um, Good for you. And, yeah. I don't have a lot of free time. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, moved down to the Bay Area as I was finishing up my research project. Um, right around the same time, I kind of wrapped up my iPhone app, which is an app for drummers called DrumSense. Uh, Android version, probably never going to be made. Because <laughs> uh, you don't have a lot of time anymore? Yeah, no. Um, and my friend told me I could probably get a job doing uh, iOS development. And I was pretty surprised, but it sounded like a nice idea. So mm -hmm. found a small startup in San Francisco to take me on as an intern. Did that for a few months, and then they hired me to do Android. Um, oh. And it, it didn't work out super well with that company, but I... But now here you are. Stuck. Yeah, I just stuck Android on Android. Now. Yeah. Cool. Um, do you have like a book or website you'll recommend people in the Android community? Yeah, so I, I started with like getting Android books. I got the Big Nerd Ranch book. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the book that helped me the most was probably Head First Java. And I know people have mixed opinions on the Head First books because, uh -huh. you know, it's like, it's kind of a comic book, right? It's not super dense. Um, it's a good introduction. But yeah, it, it really helped me uh, get a decent grasp of like Java fundamentals because I was coming from a land of like R and Mathematica. And not, oh, like, that's not, very different. Yeah, not uh, yeah. object-oriented right. at all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the one thing that stuck with me was like thinking of object references as a remote control. So huh. when you pass an object reference to like another method, mm -hmm. you're passing a copy of that remote control. So that, that like visualization has just stuck in wow. my mind. Nice. Uh, and there's another poem that goes with that, which is uh, roses are red, this poem is choppy, passing by value is passing by copy. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those little devices that I just keep around with me. Poems. I never thought of using yeah. poems yeah. to help program. Yeah, it was That's a really awesome. enjoyable book. I read it all cover to cover. Yeah. Nice. And uh, if someone come up to you and said, hey, I want to get started on Android, what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, this is a tricky question because Android is, is like, it's Java and it's also the Android right. SDK, which right. is like this whole s slew of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so my advice is to like probably not listen to everyone who says like you need to start by learning Java fundamentals and then you need to read all the Android documentation mm -hmm. and then you need to build a sample app using no libraries and then like who you said to, that? Well, <laughs> so, so some people think you need to like build very incrementally from the ground up, mm. but I think while that has its value and that's kind of like the classical approach to learning. Um, the, the biggest light bulb moments for me have come from just hacking around with stuff that I didn't necessarily understand right away. Right. Um, and it's crazy how your brain makes connections. I mean, like you can be, uh, you know, hacking on like some square library like retrofit or something. And sure. then, and then suddenly something else you were working on makes uh -huh. sense. And, and huh. like you, you just get these connections. I mean, I'm in the same camp. I'm in the yeah. dive in the deep end of the pool. Yeah. Kind of camp. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to play in the kiddie pool. I want to do yeah. what I want to do. Just yeah. jump right in. And of course, like I struggle because it's the deep end of the pool. Yeah. No, <laughs> but I just figure out what I need to do yeah. and get help when I need to. So mm -hmm. as I, I, I think there's this validity in that, in, in the sense that you're driven by your project rather than right. yeah, let's sure. get the boring fundamentals, yeah. like do this first and that first. You mean you're going to lose interest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I agree with Android's you. Android's cool because like you can build something and then press a button and then it's on a screen. You can play with exactly. it right away. So yeah, it's, so it's awesome. I, I think nice. you should just go for it. Nice. <laughs> and um, so I think you mentioned retrofit. You want to tell us more about that? Yeah. Uh, so I've been working with um, just playing around because there's, there's so much mm -hmm. you can do with this library because uh, you can compose your rest adapter, right? Which creates an instance of your mm -hmm. uh, 
like API client or service or whatever. So for people who are yeah. not familiar with Retrofit, maybe we can go sure, back a little yeah. bit. Like, what does it yeah. do? Retrofit <laughs> is a library that allows you to make calls to an API mm-hmm. like, um, on the server. Via, right? Yeah, backend server stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's it's really wrapping like all the lower level networking stuff. And it's actually not a land Android specific library. No, you it's can a use Java it in library, yeah, yeah. in just pure Java program. Of course we are Android yeah. developers so we use it in, yeah. in Android. Yeah. Cool. So so at the very simplest case you can just like create a, a Java interface mm-hmm. right with like one method, say like, you know, get get GitHub repositories right, for a the, user. I think that's the yeah. example yeah, on yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, on the uh, official documentation. Library. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you create a REST adapter, which mm-hmm. you basically don't have to configure very much at all. It has right. you know, pretty sane defaults. And then you just create an instance of your uh, API. Yeah, yeah, your interface. Yeah. Uh, and then that makes all the, re- the calls for you and then cool. delivers the response as like a, an object or a, a RxJava observable or like a, in a callback. Right. Um, so that's so yeah, like that's what retrofit. specifically why yeah. like that you do with it that you find so lately surprised. yeah it's just an endless uh, you know, sure that's why I say yeah. lately <laughs> lately uh, I've been playing with the client mm-hmm. interface okay. so default now I think in the latest version it uses OK client which wraps OK HTTP client right. which is from OK HTTP OK client is actually part of retrofit I believe anyway um, so I've been making like a custom client and. Client is an interface with only one method, execute. Okay. Um, so if you provide your own client, you can do whatever you want in the execute method. So what I'm doing. So you don't now, actually need to talk to the network. No. You so what I'm doing do now, things. putting a bunch of JSON files in like a, re, a raw resources directory. Yeah. Um, and I can you know change these JSON files however I want, and then basically when I create my REST adapter and retrofit, I just mm-hmm. pass in an instance of this client, hmm. and I can even create you know a builder within this client and pass it do like you do that for context. mocking for testing it's for like... debug apps okay. so like the my current project i'm working on it at social code mm-hmm. has like crazy json schemas where you can have like 10 different values for one json field and you might have like you know 20 different okay. json fields so there's like infinite permutations mm-hmm. of data um and it, you can't really rely on the network or the you know backend api for like providing every possible case of mm-hmm. data. So, uh, you know, rather than like ask the backend developers to like dump a bunch of JSON into like an alpha server or something uh-huh. like that, I'm just doing it myself. I just take oh. take the JSON from, you know, the prod server or whatever and then just alter it to my needs. And then I'm um, using like the debug drawer if you're familiar with that from U2020 Jboard. Sure. Sent lab. Anyway, tangent. Sure. Yeah, uh, it's all square. So you can switch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course. So you can switch yeah. to like what I'm calling local client, right? Okay. Um, and then just. And then you're actually interacting with the app, yeah, but so with you're the data that you populating the UI. Canned, essentially. Yep. So you're cool. testing the full path from from JSON. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're not. It's not the full path because you're not interacting with the network, but. Uh, sure, but you're, JSON you're to UI. Yeah, you're doing all the the proper thing in terms of like doing asynchronous yep. things. Yeah. But instead of reaching out to the network, you're just reading the JSON and then feeding it, and then the rest of the app. Follows yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Um, so you talked briefly about using that as debug. Is there mm-hmm. any specific things you do for testing your app beyond like mocking all the data and yeah. pressing it with your hand? Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah. I mean, testing like specifically testing. Uh, I I write a ton of unit tests. Okay. Um, probably even sometimes when I don't really need them, like. I'm, I'm like so you very, like unit testing that I, much? Yeah, I'm very thorough with unit tests. I <laughs> um, like to you know cover as much as possible. I'm, do you generate code coverage reports as well? No, I, I okay. don't. I, I just make sure to. So you're just in your head, you know. Yeah. It's, okay. Like, um, I'm. I, I really like the like model view presenter oh, UI okay. pattern. Um, yeah, for, for that a lot makes of, unit testing much easier. Yeah, actually, for a lot yeah. of things, it, it might be overkill, but it's it's nice like. Just to well, give but you a like specific example. Matt from one year later will thank you for doing yeah, it probably because nice. you forgot like <laughs> you know what uh, you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, so it it it's good for three things I think. Uh, first, um, it just makes you write better code, right? Okay. Like, uh, kind of forces you to use 
dependency injection, either with dagger or or just a constructor. Yeah. Like well, I wouldn't call that forcing dependency injection, but more like it makes your modules cleaner. Sure. Like the the, yeah. the, the boundaries between the mm -hmm. modules have to be pretty clear yeah. if you want to be able to test one module. Yeah. If they are exactly. just like this one ball of things that do many things, then sure. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't have to be dagger. Because like well, I'm saying that because yeah. a lot of people like they have triggers basically. They yeah. heard the word dependency injection. Sorry. They're like, Ugh! Yeah. It doesn't have <laughs> like, to be that. Right. I was so. just talking about you know passing in dependencies. There I go again. Uh, passing in stuff like in the stuff. constructor. Or, 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 <laughs> That's how know, we make things better. However you do it. Stuff. Uh, <laughs> just yeah, make sure you're, you're able to like. Right. I mean, I think it, you, it it gives you kind of a way to think about your architecture. Yeah. So that sure. um, you 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 end up writing better software. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first reason. Okay. Uh, the second reason yeah. is uh, just faster development and verifying behavior. Right. Just something as simple as like making sure the right branch of an if else gets called. Mm -hmm. um, you know, checking handling inputs like nulls, right. uh, empty lists, right. stuff like that, or like sorting collections, making sure that. Uh, your comparator is behaving correctly, uh, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Def um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I use Makito a lot too to cool. mock behavior of uh, dependencies. So, right. right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. um, cool. Let's see. And then the third reason is what was the third reason? I forgot. Uh, well, I guess I, I guess two and three are kind of the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Faster development and just verifying behavior. So sure. Yeah. Great. And that's it for today. Thank you so much, Matt. Any Thanks, last words? Oh, last words. <laughs> Come to Denver. It's really cool. Yeah. Yay, Colorado. Bye. Bye.